What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Elimination Chamber full show review and results. Now, it's kind of weird coming into this show. I thought the show started at regular time. I completely forgot that it was an international show and that, uh, you know, it would be taking place at like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And it totally took me by surprise. I was in the middle of filming a big time thing for the, for the channel and uh, I literally just looked up. I was trying to look up the lineup for the chamber to make sure that I got the complete lineup correctly. And I realized that the show had already started, and I was like, what the hell? So I am here to review the show, but I still plan on doing some sort of epic elimination chamber here on the channel. I don't know if I will you. I don't know what I'll do. Let me know what you have down below in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are, man. But we're going to dive into elimination chamber. Lots of things coming into this show. Would we be epically surprised by some crazy stuff? We will not know until we dive in, man. I cannot wait to get into it with you. We're going to cover if the show is shitty, great, or somewhere in between, man. Let's dive into the show and find the hell out. Elimination chamber 20. 22. Alright guys, so our main show kicked off with the big dog, the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns taking on Oldberg right here, and I was low-key scared that they were going to give it to Goldberg, you know, you never know. I, I figured they'd protect the big dog, but you never know, man. You never truly know until Goldberg's put down if he's going to win the matchup, so I was very happy to see Roman Reigns win. This, this matchup wasn't anything, you know, it went on about as long as I figured it would. I figured that, you know, it would be pretty short because Goldberg doesn't, you know, typically last very long here, and I I would say that it wasn't anything special, you know, nothing I'm going to go back and watch, you know, it didn't really intrigue me that much. It was cool to see these two in the ring there, but not, you know, nothing to write home about. I was super glad that Roman won. Now we're one step closer to what we think's going to happen, so there's that, but Roman Reigns does take care of Oldberg, thank God, and that's really all you can really ask for, you know? Next up was our first Elimination Chamber on the night. We had the women's version of the Elimination Chamber. The winner would be going on to take on the Raw Women's Champion at WrestleMania. You had Alexa Bliss, Dewdrop, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Beyond Bianca Belair and Nikki Ash. And this matchup for me, I thought it had some moments here and there, but like a lot of it was lethargic. It was very slow and I thought it was a bit goofy at times. You know, all the women had to wear their full body suits and it, at first it totally didn't even hit me. Like I was like, why are they doing that? And then I thought, uh. But some of them were very fire. I think Bianca Belair won the night in hers. Hers was badass with like the iridescence. It was very, very sweet. I know my wife would love to wear that. Rhea Ripley's was badass. Liv Morgan's was badass. I hope to see some figures out of some of these, especially Bianca Belair's. I thought it was really cool. However, this matchup, you know, like I said, it, it was what it was. Rhea Ripley eliminated Nikki Ash. Liv Morgan eliminated Dewdrop. Didn't see that one coming. Alexa Bliss el eliminated Liv Morgan. Bianca Belair eliminated Rhea Ripley. And our final two was Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair in which Bianca Belair would put down Alexa Bliss and she would win the matchup. So Bianca Belair's headed to WrestleMania. I think that's the right call. You know, I could see Alexa Bliss and I would have loved to seen Liv Morgan get the nod there. But at the same time, B Bianca Belair, it's just on another level. She's honestly untouchable. You know, I, I think she's probably the best overall women's wrestler in the ring. Or She's definitely top three in the company, probably, man. She's so damn good, so athletic, so powerful, so explosive. She really brings it when she wrestles, which is why I appreciate her so very much. So I am uh, super happy for her. Hope she goes on to capture the championship, honestly, to repay Becky, you know, for that short matchup. I think that's the story there, and that would be cool. But Bianca Belair wins, and you can't say much else. I hope that the men's chamber is is better than this, but uh, it wasn't a horrific matchup. Next up, guys, was this tag team match. Ronda Rousey and Naomi taking on Charlotte and Sonya Deville. You guys know that Charlotte is taking on Ronda at WrestleMania for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And in this scenario right here, I didn't really care for it. You know, Ronda was supposed to do it with one hand tied behind her back, and she did. I mean, her and Naomi win the matchup. Nothing too crazy, nothing over the top again with this matchup. Not one that I was really invested in. I am excited to see Ronda Rousey back. That was my favorite part of the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, to be honest with you. You guys know how I feel about Rousey. Absolute killer. Love her figure. Love love the animosity she brings to the ring, and it was it was awesome. It's cool to see her right here. She had like a freaking Karate Kid outfit going on, man. She was looking pretty... She was looking crazy out there, man. Barefoot, no makeup, just kicking everybody's ass, so that was interesting. Naomi's gear was pretty damn cool. I did not like Charlotte's gear. I bet we get in basic form, it'll be a horrific basic. Charlotte's attire was the worst in this match, for sure. However, Ronda and Naomi get the job done. Not much more to say. I don't think it's worth going back and taking a look at. I think this could have been for TV. Next up, guys, we had Drew McIntyre taking on Mad Cat Moss and Trash Corbin, or, you know, he's at ringside. This matchup went on for entirely too long. 
Wong, I will say I legitimately thought Moss broke his neck, man. That looked terrific. I don't know if Drew was being, you know, reckless. I don't know if Madcap Moss didn't rotate correctly. I don't know what the whole story was, but that did not look good, man. That did not look good. I hope he's all right. I hope everything's well. He definitely has a concussion, though, man. He landed straight on his damn forehead. I mean, the meme is kind of funny. I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie, but I'm just glad that he, you know, he didn't suffer any, it's like, super significant injury in that moment. Hopefully, all is well with him, and, and you know, he recovers if, if anything is wrong, like concussion or anything, but Jesus. This match wasn't enjoyable. I just do not like this feud. I, I don't care about it. Drew McIntyre has gotten very stale, especially when you put him in these kinds of feuds. So yeah, this is just not doing it for me. You guys know Trash Corbin. He's the he's the head of the house there, and he he, he just leads the trash cans all over, all over the place. I don't know. I, I don't like to see his feuds. I don't like to see him wrestle. So uh, I liked his unhappy, miserable, poor Corbin or down on his luck Corbin was much more enjoyable. But anyways, this was trash. Prayers for Moss. Next up was the Raw Women's Championship. The winner would be going on to take on Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. This matchup slapped, bro. What a fun match right here. Lita still has it. I wish that she would come back full time because she put on a show. I thought these two worked brilliantly together. I thought the back and forth was terrific. I like the reversals. I mean, we had some near falls. I thought Lita legitimately won a couple times. So this is the kind of stuff you want to see out of the women's division, man. This was great. This was fantastic. Much better than our other two women's matches that we saw on this card. This is a match that I'd say go back and watch. I thought that, you know, if you're a Lita fan back in the day you grew up watching Lita. To see her go one-on-one -on -one with another great women's talent in WWE history here was just excellent, man. It was really fun back and forth there, but, but Becky Lynch does take care of business, get the victory there, and she does outlast Lita to move on to WrestleMania. Lita did have like a standing ovation afterwards, and the crowd was chanting her name. Hopefully she sticks around, bro, because this was awesome. I hope to see her back very, very soon, and it was amazing. It really was. I had a ton of fun with it. If you guys like this matchup, please let me know your thoughts on this, but I thought that Lita killed it, and this was a very fun matchup, but Becky Lynch does retain the championship. Next up, guys, was our SmackDown Tag Team Championship match that didn't even happen, you know? Uh, this is outrageous, to be honest with you. The Viking War Machine Raiders experience come out to the ring and get jumped by the Usos, and the match doesn't happen. They are apparently, they cannot wrestle, and they flew across the world for this. They flew across the world for this. Unbelievable, honestly. Like, can you imagine doing that, man? You fly halfway across the world for 15-hour flight, you get to work, and they're like, like, okay, you're done. I don't know, man. Anyways, that was it. You know, you hate to see it. I guess this will be your Mania SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, but woof. I don't know. Not much to say here, man. They're delaying the inevitable. And for a minute, bit, guys, we had the Elimination Chamber matchup for the WWE Championship. Bobby Lashley defending the title against Brock Lesnar, Matt Riddle, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, and Austin Theory. Coming in this matchup, I was hyped because this is a pretty damn good lineup. I like all these guys in the ring. You know, I thought that we could have a pretty good banger. Matchup started fantastic. I thought. I thought it was off to a really hot start. Theory and Seth Rollins were really doing well. And just about that time, Seth Rollins loads up Austin Theory in a buckle bomb, but he power bombs him through the chamber pot and it hits. It's it's Bobby Lashley's chamber pot. So he goes through and it bumps Bobby Lashley. And apparently he hits his head on the railing of uh, of the pod or of the chamber there on one of the steel beams. And he's gone. They have to like escort him out of the thing. Uh, apparently it's due to concussion concussion protocol. Sounds legitimate, you know, I wish that it would have looked more brutal, but that is something that happens from time to time in sports, so I could see the concussion protocol being a thing, but uh, it happening in your WWE Championship match right here, six people in the chamber like that, that kind of sucked. I hated to see that for Bobby, but uh, at the end of the day, he's gone now. He's gone, and then uh, the buzzer went off, and people kept entering and entering, and it was time for Bobby Lashley to come in, but uh, he wasn't there, so, you know, in my Head, I'm thinking, okay, well, where the hell are they taking this? Well, Brock Lesnar about that time busts his way out of the chamber that he was residing in, beats the holy hell out of everyone, eliminates everyone in the matchup except for Austin Theory, F5s to Rollins, F5s to Riddle, F5s to Styles, going like a bat out of hell. Lesnar is so impressive, man. Everything he does is just legitimate. Like, holy hell, he's top 10 all time, okay? He's top 10 all time. He, he He's at least top 10 for me, okay? He's top 10 personal for me. He is so damn good. I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anyways, I didn't like the way all this played out and how we got here, but at the same time, this was pretty impressive and cool. Even though I hate to sacrifice the rumble and the chamber, I do hate that. But at the same time, it was very cool to just see play out and see him be that beast of a man. But he comes out, Austin Theory is last left. He starts running from him, gets on the chamber pod. Brock Lesnar loads him up and F5s him off of the chamber pod for the love of God. It's crazy. First of all, that's an insane spot and it was awesome. Shout out to Brock Brock Lesnar and Theory for that. But also, I planned on doing a spot similar to that in my action figure match that I wanted to do leading up to this pay-per-view. Unfortunately, we ran out of time there, and I forgot that it was an early pay-per-view overseas. But holy hell, that was insane. So that was insane there, but oh my god, man. How, how crazy was that? That was really cool. Spot of the night for sure, but damn. This show flew by. I know a lot of Saudi shows go by really, really fast. Regardless of the case, Brock Lesnar is your new WWE champion. So, b poor Bobby just yeah his his reign comes to an end here and brock is your new wwe champion so if you're wondering well, what's that mean for mania it means exactly what you think it means brad it means exactly what you think it means it means we're getting the big dog the tribal chief versus brock lesnar champion for champion for both titles at wrestlemania so yeah that is happening that is a legitimate thing no ifs, ands, or buts, man. That is happening right now. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I fantasy booked this not too long ago. I'll have to go back and check that or somebody can. I don't know. It said something similar to that. However, this Saudi show was very forgettable outside of maybe the main event. I thought Lita and Becky was really, really good. Outside of that, uh, I didn't really care for much of this show, to be honest with you. You know, uh, I thought the main event was cool. Becky and Lita tore the house down. And after that, it's, it's pretty freaking forgettable, man. But that is going to wrap up your Elimination Chamber review. I do apologize. I couldn't get the matchup before the pay-per-view, but maybe I can make it up to you guys with some different stuff. Regardless of the fact, the whole arena is set up now so I can do pick fed shows. So that's, I mean, that's basically all you can really ask for, right? But anyways, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok on My Damn Toys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross a line like this show. This show crossed the line because it, it wasted my time. You crossed the line.